Hi, I'm Rashid Okunlaru, coach, speaker and author, and welcome to this video, Managing Your Time, Energy and Emotions. And it's part of my Coaching Yourself and Your Team series, Compassionate Leadership, which is part of the NHS Southeast Leadership Academy's Leadership Shorts videos. These videos over 10 to 15 minutes give you the opportunity to pause, reflect, consider leadership and to build your leadership skills. And as we know, especially in challenging environments such as the NHS, uh, managing time and energy emotions can be tough. Um, and the higher up the organization, where there may be more expectations, it can be tough. And when we've got a lot of responsibility. For those of you who don't know me, I'm a coach, don't know me, I'm a coach, and my job really is to help people, including lots of stuff over uh, around work balance, life, man life management, and getting things done, uh, and so on. So this theme around effective time management, energy mo management, and managing your emotions is very, very commonplace. What I want to do here is, first of all, bring something important to our attention. People often talk about time management, but time is just one element of what it is that is key for us to be very effective. Time is finite. There's only 24 hours in a day. But also what you can do in, let's say, an hour will vary depending on the person, depending on their energy levels, perhaps depending on the space that they have. And for some people, it might even depend on when that time is and the time of day for them in terms of what they're like at their best. So time alone is only one measure. So often the stress comes in when we're just thinking about time. Think about it. There are times when you suddenly relax. You suddenly realize you can get more done sometimes, actually. Or there's fewer errors. But equally, some of the time pressure's on, we, we can be effective. So, so it... it, it, it the thing about here is time, it can be very, um, it can be, it, it can really, really vary depending where we're at, the state that we're at, the circumstances that we're at, what the pressures that we're under at. But we don't want to use it as the only thing that we utilize. So I want you to think about which of these pictures are you drawn to, first of all? Energy. What is it that energizes you, perhaps? Let's start here. <laughs> and remember to pause at any time you might, 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 might want to make yourself some notes. What is it that energizes you? You might think, actually, I'm energized when I get lots of sleep, when I get lots of rest, when I get time to go outside for my morning run, when, I, when I'm when i I'm eating well and when I'm sleeping well, etc. When I get time for my hobbies, great. Give some thought to what energizes you. Space, what's that mean to you? Headspace. You might think, yeah, it's time when I just can relax. When I just focus on one or two things. Think about your working space. What? How, how do you get the best out of yourself? Your home space, your living space. So very often you get those people who clear their desks and so on, first of all, isn't it? You know, or when that people have got a lot of change to do, they'll have a clear out at home or in the office and so on, it's a space and then time. What we've got over here, it's similar. We're thinking about that there's a number of things. We've got energy, we've talked about that. We've got content. I have a saying that too much content leads to discontent. You cannot pour more water into a full cup without causing a spillage. So sometimes it's the case that we might need to reduce the content or have those conversations. Sometimes it might well be our expectations, ours or others. Might we need to rail, bring them to, those in? And awareness, how aware are we of all these things? So these are things just to give you a little bit of a thought. Where are you at? What do you need to perhaps adapt? Maybe it's about for you thinking about those expectations for you. Maybe it's about looking at your energy levels. I'm a big fan of this picture here, space structure and serendipity. What's the space that you need? that energizes you, makes you feel good, what the structures that you need to put in place to make yourself very effective, and then allowing some room for serendipity. And then it might be good for you to look at things, okay, from an annual point of view, what do I need to do this quarter, that quarter, that quarter, what that quarter. That can often, when you look at things annually, and then perhaps by month, that might take off the pressure on you thinking about things on that daily basis. Or, so it might be something you need to think about daily or weekly basis, this is here, some things monthly and sometimes yearly. I want to give you lots of different tools for you to think more expansively and more richly about energy, space, and time. So, first of all, some tips here on this, on this sheet for you. One, space, silence, stillness, time for you to be and breathe. Maybe that might be mindfulness, maybe it's meditation, maybe it's time for those hobbies. Maybe putting that time for that just 10 minute reboot at the end of the, every day, at the end of every week. Sleep, sustenance, sport, exercise. 
stay simplistic, really short, strategically know what's important. Just a couple of to-do list um, things on this to-do list. When you're very, very busy, think about what's most important, what's most important now. Putting systems and structures in place. So the things that you need to regularly do, making sure that the system's in place. Support. If you're struggling, ask others. I remember once coaching somebody, she was incredibly busy, busy role, busy home life as well. Um, she came in one day for a coaching, leadership coaching session. She said to me, and my, her mum said wonderfully to her, you know what, stop trying to be superwoman. She's incredible. She's a wonderful person. Um, and, and we had a conversation about what things could we put in place? She put a couple of simple things in place. She told her partner that she was going to bed half an hour earlier so that she could read. Um, so that helped her really unwind after a busy day. And she decided to get up half an hour early every day that she'd get a little bit of time before the kids up to plan, to prepare, to recenter, to have time for herself and so on. That had a huge impact on her and her life and her career. The seasons, trusting seasons, nature, inspiration. What things could you start, stop, scale down? Tip here, in order to manage your energy and your emotions, especially, <laughs> Think about, first of all, what you like at your best. Get a piece of paper, draw a picture, write down. What times, what places? For me, I'm at my best very first thing in the morning. I can coach, train, run videos like this any time of the day. But if I've got heavy lifting work, report, work, certain things to do, for me, it's best that I do first thing in the morning. You might be completely opposite. So for me, every hour before 8.30 is for me worth about three afterward for certain tasks. What do you, so what times of the day are your best? What environments bring the best out? You might think, oh, actually I'm best by the window when I'm this by the garden. Maybe you could shuffle, shuffle things around. What do you like when you're stressed? What do you like when you're put for the test? What do you need to be mindful of considering all of this? So pause this, considering all these things. What things do you need to do? Because you might think, okay, actually I'm not my best when I'm put to the test. I'm like this when I'm stressed. It's best that I don't get involved in these things. I give myself time. This might help you hugely manage yourself and your emotions. So. There's some tips here, I'm not gonna read them out, that are gonna help you to simplify. So you might wanna pause this and to strategize. Maybe there are things here that you're doing, maybe things that you used to do, maybe the things that you need to review. Maybe things here you could even improve. And again, there's some tips here about how you might be able to manage your distractions. One thing is to be aware of the habits and put in time for them. Don't try to ignore them. So if you know you have a lag at this particular time, could you have a 10 minute coffee break at that particular time and then come back, re-energize? Sometimes there'll be times where taking that 10 minutes out or making sure you do have that half hour or hour lunch hour might make you even more productive. If I was really honest, I remember that many years ago, I used to come in early, leave late, and I was, I was very ineffective, actually after certain bits of the day. So get to know yourself. What could you do at the times when you're energized, when, you're, when your energy is lagging and so on. So maybe if you can shuffle certain things around, you might not always be able to control it, but if you're in leadership, you might be able to shuffle that. Again, become aware of that with your team too so you can support them also. Some other tips here. Here are my 12 top tips. First of all, the one I will read out for you, a couple that I will read out for you is here, managing your time, the sleep, the rest and so on, and diarize the time for you, for loved ones, things that you love to do, otherwise they will not happen. I invite you to pause here and sit with all of these other tips that will help you. One other one, the last one I want to bring out to your attention. The times when you're incredibly busy when you've got a lot to do, turn off everything else, shut down the windows and just focus on that one task. It might make have a huge impact. Avoid arguments and avoid gossip and draining people. That will also help you to be accepting and embracing of life. I've also put here some tips for personal growth. Taking responsibility for your life and letting other people do the same. Trusting your heart and your instincts. Knowing when to rest, when to work, when to take a break and building those rich relationships. Those things can help you. Remember to reach out for help and support when you need to. So we've covered a lot of things here, haven't we? Lots to think about in a short space of time. <laughs> so I went to, for you to pause and reflect think about what is it you've learned or remembered. And what's the action you're going to take and when? And crucially, perhaps to get that diary and to put that time in for you, for the holidays, for the break, and so on. So think about how you organize yourself and, and put in that time for you and for your leadership journey too. Certainly as a leader, I certainly recommend that people have a 10-minute review um, every week. Where am I at? Where's the team at? Etc. It might be longer than that, but it might be you're so busy, it can't be much more than that. that even that 10 minutes to pause to reflect can be very, very powerful. 
I'm going to stop the video there. I want to thank you so much for your time. I know it's very, very precious, but I hope you find that encouraging and energizing perhaps and helps you to manage those emotions. Check out other videos in this series too, including the mindfulness um, um, session and compassion. That may well help you also in terms of managing those emotions. And I want to wish you all the best. Take good care. Bye-bye.